Hi, I'm Amber, and welcome to the Lone Star Keto Podcast. Today, we have a special guest with us, Stephanie Lincoln. She is a former Army captain, and she is also the founder of Fireteam Whiskey. Welcome, Stephanie. Thank you for having me, Amber. I love your podcast, so I'm so excited to be on it. Well, thank you so much. And I'm really happy to have you on. Uh, as we were talking earlier, my son is a former Marine. And so I've had some experience with the whole military thing. And I, I can't wait to pick your brain. But first of all, let's hear a little bit of background on you. Like, I, I want to know about your, your health. What, what happened before you even joined the military and then with the military? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I uh, was a typical tomboy growing up and it wasn't a big surprise to my uh, family that I joined the military, joined the army when I was 17 years old. So uh, I was a baby and um, I had always been a chubby kind of kid. I was very tomboyish, but I always had a higher body fat. Um, and not surprisingly, you know, my mother was, had no business having kids. She was way too young. She had me at 15. So, you know, basically I was fed sugar from, I, there's pictures of me at like one and a half years old with soda in my bottle. So, and if you're watching, you can see all the fillings that I have in my mouth that I got to replace now. <laughs> so, um, so as a kid, I had lots of looking back now you know, knowing what I know now, uh, I think a huge part of the things that I suffered from, from the age of like five, um, were related to just very poor nutrition. And we were the standard kind of eighties, you know, junk food, you know, eating sugar all day long, sugary cereals, um, you know, soda. I never drank water. That was like unheard of. It was either juice or soda. So I mean, ate just processed foods. Everything was like microwaved or, you know, from a box frozen. Um, and I had, I recall having migraine headaches at the age of five. I was taking full blown like adult Tylenol when I was uh, five years old, you know, which is an indication that something was happening. Right. Um, so Throughout my, my childhood, I was a little heavier, um, had headaches. I had um, bladder control issues too. Mm -hmm. um, I got lots of tests done. I even had MRIs done. You know, they, they never could find anything wrong with me. You know, in the typical way overuse of, ana, you know, antibiotics, you know, as, as an 80s kid, you know, that was a, a yeah. standard thing. Anything that was wrong with you, you got antibiotics. So um, so when I was, I had really bad acne when I, when I started, you know, um, puberty, I, um, you know, had horrible cystic acne. Um, I had, I started to have, um, actually passing out episodes of low blood sugar. I had some dangerous ones. I passed out in the shower one time and, you know, I could have, could have died, you know, that my mom couldn't get in the, the, uh, the bathroom, you know, the door was locked. So, um, I started having to carry like sugary things with me everywhere I went. And I was obsessed with having to like eat sugar, like every couple hours to keep my blood sugar up. So hormonal issues, just, um, I got put on, um, uh, uh, birth control pills because my, you know, my periods were all over the place and I had this horrible cystic acne, um, and I would get violently ill for every time I started a new pill pack, uh, I'd like be down for like days. I would miss school just because I just like literally, I don't know what the level of hormones they had me on, but it just made me just sick. Like I would just be sick and lethargic and fatigued and throwing up like for days when I first started the, you know, the pill pack. So join the military, um, and, uh, you know, continue to suffer from those things as I got older I um, had even more, you know, I, I just kind of kept having trouble losing weight. I would do the typical dieting, crash dieting, restricting meals, over exercising, and um, trying to get that under control. And of course, as we know, you know, as you get older, it gets harder and harder to do that. And, um, you know, I was on a laundry list of medications. I mean, I was in my 30s. Uh, and I was on like six or seven different medications for my, you know, migraines to, they put me on Topamax, um, which is, I think they pulled off the market because it was so toxic. Um, I did just a ton of stuff, like, because I just had all these unexplained 
aches and pains. I had joint pain, back pain, you know, chronic daily headaches, migraine headaches, hormonal craziness all over the place, cystic acne and, um, stomach issues. I was on, uh, I had, uh, uh, reflux, acid reflux, chronic constipation, lots of, you know, kind of IBS type of symptoms, you know, bloating and, and horrible, um, pains, you know, gas, gas pains, or, or, you know, just it, I definitely didn't feel like a young person. You know, I felt like I, as I got older and I was just in my thirties, I was already on this long list of medications, had all these issues wrong with me. And like, I was supposed to be in the prime of my life, right? <laughs> like you're supposed to be the healthiest at that age. And it just wasn't happening for me. And um, I, I basically, it was out of desperation. You know, I, everything I was trying wasn't working. I was doing the, you know, the healthy diet. I was eating my oatmeal and eating my whole grains and doing whole wheat bread and, you know, eating a lot of vegetables and fruits and, you know, lean meats and hardly ever meat, you know, doing all the things that we're told to do. Right. And I was just getting sicker and sicker and sicker. So basically I was like, F this, this, this obviously is not the answer. So I turned to Dr. Google you know, and I literally Googled good diets for migraines and good diets for, um, hypoglycemia. And I discovered this thing, it was called keto. And I was like, well, what the heck is this? And I start, I just Googled keto and, um, Jimmy Moore kind of came up. And so I checked out his podcast and I, um, ordered his keto clarity book and I read it and it just blew my mind, blew it out of the water. I was like, this is science. Like I'm a science person. I am a hardcore, like total nerd star Trek. Like I'm, I'm just a science person. I need the science and this science made sense. So I'm like, well, why am I being told to do the opposite of what the science says? So I'm like, okay, I'm going to use myself as a guinea pig. And so I slowly, I, I baby stepped it. Cause I was afraid with my hypoglycemia. I was so afraid of these passing out episodes. I thought I was, this isn't going to work for me. I have to eat sugar every two hours. So I baby stepped. I just slowly reduced carb. I took one thing away, you know, every week and got it down to a keto macro type. And I, I mean, it was like instant, like all this stuff I was suffering from dissipated and completely went away. It was like a miracle. And so at the time I was working, um, and uh, as a contractor, I was out of the military by then I was a civilian contractor, um, doing medical, uh, military medical and mental health. So I was going to these medical events every day. And I was meeting with like 25, 30 soldiers a day, looking through their medical records. And I was noticing a trend as, as I was kind of doing this for myself, I'm like, huh, these are guys in their twenties and thirties and they've are suffering from the same stuff I was suffering from. And then some, you know, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, you know, all these unexplained aches and pains. And they're like 50, 60 pounds overweight. And I'm, and then, but then I'm like, but they're sitting down here with me with like a 40 ounce sugary energy drink in one hand and like two, you know, two uh, potato chips bags and, and a candy bar in the other. And then they're just eating and drinking all day. And I'm like, and I'm like, is there a connection? I think there's a connection. Oh, and I didn't even say I suffered from anxiety, panic attacks, and depression, and was on those medications and completely resolved all of those as well. So I'm like, I wanted to stand up in the middle of these medical events and go, stop the insanity. Like, I know the answer. I know the answer. It worked for me. It can work for you. So that kind of translated into me starting fire team whiskey. I was doing military medical and mental health. Um, I had gotten my fitness certification just because I love to teach and I love doing fitness training. I'm like, you know what? I can package this up as a solution, a holistic solution, the nutrition, the fitness, the, what we call warrior wellness, the health education, the mental aspect of what we need to do um, and package that up and kind of present this as a solution to all these issues that the military and the first responders are suffering from. 
Yeah. And, you know, watching what my son went through and seeing all the different guys, and he was young, he was 17 when he went in. And you still saw a lot of overweight uh, guys and not exactly very healthy. And, you know, looking at the MREs and the you know, the ingredients in that, oh, it was just horrifying. So let's talk more about military health, what, what you witnessed yourself and what you saw. Yeah. And it's crazy that you say that because I, I joined in 1997. So translate that to now, you know, I saw a dramatic shift in the way our military looks, you know, it's just from visual point of view. You know, I remember back in my first unit, almost no one was overweight. I mean, it was maybe two or three people in the whole unit were overweight. Um, You just didn't see the level that, I mean, you go into a unit now and you're like, wow, it's like half of this unit is, is overweight, you know, from, from maybe could you lose 10 pounds to like, that guy's obese. Like what, what are they doing in uniform? And the, the statistics prove it. I mean, since um, 2011, since 2011 alone, the obesity rate for the military, active duty military members has risen 73%. Wow. That's staggering. Mm. 73% in just that small amount of time. So it, it, the, the obesity rate within the military is actually increasing faster than it is on the civilian side of things. Wow. It's, I mean, it's way outpacing the civilian side as, why? as, as far as the increase. Why right. do you think so that is? Why is that? And, yeah. you know, you can kind of look at some systemic um, approaches, you know, that the military, you know, you could argue has not taken um, to, to tackle this. And, you know, and I know from my experience being in the chow halls and, and eating MREs and what is available on bases, um, they're, they're basically not making an effort. I mean, it, it, the, I don't know who these people are in, in DOD, you know, up there in the nutrition, they obviously are completely, um, you know, uneducated about, about, you know, the current research about nutrition, or they just don't care. I I mean, really, that's what it looks like, because the level of effort is so um, lethargic. And their, their efforts um, recently to improve the military obesity problem is to just tell them to work out more, you know, so they think it's a fitness issue. They think, um, you know, so they created all these apps, you know, that to help you, you know, get fitter to, to exercise more, to move more. And um, their nutrition is based on the old, you know, 1950s, low fat, high, high carb, um, eat less, you know, less if you want to lose weight. And their approach in the chow halls, they have this um, red, yellow, green system. And I laugh every time I talk about it because it's so... Um, it's so childish and it's so silly. Like you, you can't help but laugh. Otherwise you would cry because it's like, okay, I go into a chow hall and usually they have one side where they have the healthy food, which is always like a, you know, some sort of baked fish or chicken and lots of carbs like mashed potatoes and, you know, like some sort of vegetable side, which is usually a very high carb side. Um, and then it's all just processed food, right? It's just, it's not made from scratch, of course. It's just, pro- you know, frozen, just warmed up stuff. And then they'll have maybe a, a very tiny little menial salad bar, which is, you know, iceberg lettuce and, you know, that kind of stuff. And then they have the fried food line, you know, and you get your pizzas and your burgers and, your, you know, and you know, the line for that side is like way longer than the line for the healthy food, which is, you know. <laughs> And then they have this, these little color coded signs and it's green. So green is you should eat more of this. Yellow is, well, sure you can eat it, but you know, maybe you should just get a smaller portion and then they have the reds, but they're offering the red. So it's don't eat this, (laughs) but here I'm going to play, you know, place it out here for you to eat. 
So I'm like, okay, why would you even offer the red foods? If you know, red means stop, don't eat, but you have a plate of cakes with this red sign. And it's like, you can take however many you want, right? (laughs) There's not even any restrictions on how many you can take, you know? So it's, it's ludicrous. And, you know, they're not offering healthier choices. I understand we're all adults, you know, and, and, you know, they're, we should be able to make our own choices, but not offering um, a healthy alternative um, and calling it healthy when, when it's actually not a healthy alternative is, is, I mean, it's doing such an injustice to, because these are usually young people who are, you know, lower educated. I mean, that's, that's really who joins the military is usually lower educated um, people maybe poor, more poor econo- economically, right? Who were joining the military. That's, that's, you know, I'm not just saying that because I'm making a judgment that it are the people, those are the people who join the military. So we're not educating them and we're, we're translating this education as, you know, very young, you know, up, up and coming adults, you know, they're out on their own. They're making their own choices finally about their foods and we're miseducating them on what's healthy and what's not. And we're setting the standard, you know, for them to, to establish these very poor habits. And those are obviously very hard to break because if we all could break poor habits, we wouldn't have a trillion dollar obesity, you know, uh, uh, industry in at least, you know, the United States and, you know, have the rates of diabetes and obesity that we have, they were, if it were easy, we'd be able to do it. Right. So it's all about the the behavioral change and we're establishing these very poor, uneducated, miseducated, um, habits within these, you know, up and coming adults that are very hard to break. Yeah. I I mean, when you look at the entering age, they are very young. They want them young. (laughs) And then when they start with that, because they're already, you know, putting their own, you know, ideas and uh, what they have to do in order to make a soldier or Marine or whatever it is. And then they have all this other stuff that is so wrong. That just breaks my heart. I I can't even stand that. But, you know, we were so misled. And, you know, like you said, why keto here it was, it was like your miracle, right? It was for me too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it, we, that's what it we felt didn't like. have that information mm-hmm. and we did what we were told. I did like you, I did the oatmeal. I, I did the, the whole wheat toast that was low calorie. I did the, the chicken breasts. I, you know, I used margarine, not butter. You know, I did all that. I used the seed oils, you know, heart healthy. And it it just demolished my health. And then here they are learning that exact same thing. But, you know, this is terrible. You mentioned something about a vitamin D deficiency that seems to be very prevalent in the military. Why is that? Well, actually, you know, that's actually nationwide. I mean, I've seen statistics up to like 80, 85 percent of Americans are vitamin D deficient. So again, another example of, you know, the military is trying to address the issue, right? I mean, vitamin D deficiency can cause very serious issues, you know, over time, if, Mm -hmm. if you have this chronic deficiency. So their, their way of approaching it is to, you know, the, the typical medical model is, okay, well, we want to supplement, right? We'll just, you know, have you take a vitamin D supplement? So their idea was to create this bar. Um, it's like a candy bar, basically. And oh, yeah. it's called the performance readiness bar. You know, it has to have a cool oh. name, you know? <laughs> so no. they, they know about marketing in the military, apparently. So it says on the front, fortified with calcium and vitamin D to maintain good bone health. Doesn't that sound wow. healthy? Mm. Sounds healthy, right? So any like ignorant, you know, 17 year old, like I was, you know, coming in, okay, well, I've, you know, I've got to eat these bars. So they basically just make you eat them. They're just like, you go into boot camp and it's like, you got to have your bar every day and they just hand it to you and you like a good soldier, eat it, you know? So 
we we know about reading labels for those of you who don't know we have i have a good a uh, couple of good videos on our youtube channel about that so um you just turn it over you know just like most people would be able to do but for some reason we don't because it's a behavior change right and the very first ingredient is corn syrup oh very first so that means the first ingredient is what's the most in uh -huh. that bar corn syrup is the base of this bar and the whole point of this bar is to fortify and and uh, supplement vitamin d right so where is the vitamin d it's almost at the bottom of the list which means there's the least amount of this in the bar so we go from corn syrup to a f this is funny for the keto and carnivore people it's called a fat replacer they literally say fat replacer on there. What? It's made of plums, dates, and grapes. Oh, okay. So we're replacing the fat with carbs. Right. <laughs> so corn syrup and a carb fat replacer. Then we've got crispy rice cereal. Sounds delicious. <laughs> Brown rice crisps. Then we've got your fru fructose. Palm oil. And then some other stuff that I've never even like heard of and I would have to look up. <laughs> so we, we have the dextrose, the maldextrin, oh. the glycerin, the soybean lectin oil. So we're going down a list of ingredients that's, you know, 10, 15 ingredients long. We still haven't gotten a vitamin D, which apparently, you know, was the whole point of feeding the soldiers and the, the service members this bar. So we get down to the almost the, the second to the last ingredient is vitamin D, finally. And all these chemicals and, and artificial sweeteners and sweeteners and, and carbs, basically. And then at the end, of course, to, to, uh, to cover all the allergies, you know, to make sure anybody with any kind of food sensitivity <laughs> would, will definitely be triggered by this. It contains egg, fish, peanut, milk, shellfish, soy, tree nuts, and wheat. So there you go. <laughs> Good grief. This is just an example of one item that's given to our military on a daily basis. That sounds worse than most of the crap you can go in the grocery store and get those protein bars. That sounds even worse. Oh, it is worse. And Ugh. it's like, well, okay, if this was such an issue, why don't you just give them a vitamin D tablet? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> but we've got it. We got to create this, you know, performance readiness bar and make wow. it sound cool and make it sound healthy. And this is, this is what I'm talking about that by a miseducation, you know, because it, Hey, the military's given it to me. It's, it's for a health reason, right. To help me with my health. So this must be healthy. So that's where it begins. What other issues do you see with the military as far as fitness and health goes? Um, you know, it's, it's definitely based on the, the, the old adage of, you know, that it's, we have somehow have a closed system, the calories in calories out, you know, for, we're still following that model. So the belief is still in the military, you know, if you just eat less calories, you're going to lose the weight, you know? So anybody who's over the age of 30 has figured out that actually ain't freaking true, you know? And you've personally experienced that, but then there's plenty of research out there that, that backs that up. We don't, our bodies are not a closed system. There are tons. I mean, we couldn't even cover the amount of things that affect our metabolism on a daily basis, if not every second of the day. Right. So that's, that's the main approach that they're still taking, you know, this old calories in calories out. And the crazy thing about it is when you, um, when you deploy, or if you're out in the field, the military believes that you are actually burning more calories, mm -hmm. right? Based on what? They have never done any actual studies on the metabolic rate of a military member in the field versus not in the field. They've never done that before. The military's never done that. So this is based on, again, just an assumption of a closed system. So what they do based on that based on the belief that I'm burning more calories out in the field is they give you more calories to eat, 
right? So the MREs, most people um, would have heard of these by now, <laughs> the, the meals ready to eat, right? They give you these and they give you three of them, right? Because you have to eat three meals a day, right? So that's, again, that's based on this old approach. And they believe, um, and this is, if you go on the, the military um, MRE site, they have a website. You can get all this information. I'm not giving you anything that can't be found. If you go to the Army MRE site, you can see this. It's right on the front page. You know, so they tell you, okay, we assume that a, you know, an average military male out in the field needs about 4,000 calories a day. What is that based on? Nothing. It's just, it's just kind of a guess. We just are guessing that, that you are burning this many calories a day. So we're going to give you the, uh, enough MREs to give you at least 4,000 calories a day. So if, if any of you know, or if you've been in the military and have deployed and have eaten these MREs, you had, you probably did experience a severe constipation, but B also a gaining of weight when you're out in the field and you're like, man, you come back out of the field and you thought you're going to be all skinny, you know, from, from working so hard. And you actually are like, man, I'm all bloated and constipated. And I feel I like put on five pounds. Why? Because you were consuming this high carb, high sugar um, diet based on the fact that you were supposed to be burning off these calories out there. So you know what the average sugar content of an MRE is? Just one oh. MRE. Now let's just, you have, you get three of these, but just one MRE. I would be scared to even guess. <laughs> so it's 80 grams of sugar in just one MRE. 80 grams. This isn't even counting, counting the carb content. This is just sugar alone. Oh, oh, you're talking added sugar. Yeah. Added oh, sugar, actual sugar. Uh, actual, oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. The, the carb content's way higher. I'm, yeah. I'm just talking about just pure sugar and wow. one MRE. Pure Why? Sugar. Why? And Why? I went through and I averaged it out. You know, some are as low as maybe 50 and some are as high as like 120, depending wow. on what's in the MRE. So yeah, again, so it goes back to, they think you need sugar for energy, right? Mm -hmm. So they want to cram a lot of sugar in these MREs to give you energy for all of this calorie burning you're going to be doing. So I did the calculation. This is crazy. Okay. So each MRE is on average, uh, 1,250 calories. You get three of those. So if you consume three of those, I'm not very good at math, but I had a calculator and I did it <laughs> 3,750 calories a day. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, we know that's an, a ludicrous amount of calories already. So if, if you're going on the closed system belief, then 3,500 calories equals one pound of body weight, right. That you would yeah. either put on. Right. So if you, choke down. I don't know how you could possibly physically do it. And you'd probably be, end up being <laughs> impacted and have to go to the hospital to, because of the severe constipation you get from the MREs. Um, if you did that for a year, you would put on at least 30 pounds. Jeez. Based on the closed system. Closed system right, right. So obviously this is, this is not based on science. This is not what our metabolism does. We, we know that. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things that affect our metabolism, but because the military is still based on this old system, they're just telling you to cram more calories if you are working harder. And if you need to lose weight, then you need to stop eating as many calories and work out more. So that's still their approach. Jeez. Okay. Now I was talking to somebody who's ex-military and they were saying that they are seeing some changes uh, trying to be implemented in the military as far as diet, like experimenting more with a, a keto uh, approach. I, I know they did that, I think with the SEALs, right? Uh, like quite some time ago, but mm -hmm. uh, also with the fitness aspect where instead of just like the pull-ups, the, the, you know, push-ups, those kind of things, they're, they're going to implement more, uh, things that are, that are more realistic to what their needs would be. Yeah. So 
Dom Diagostino, um, if you don't know who he is, who are, who are listening, he's like the, the ketone guy. I mean, he's, um, he, he's kind of the first, first and foremost researcher in this area, especially in the military. Um, and, and also he works with NASA astronauts, which is super cool. Mm -hmm. So basically it's this super cool job. He works with Navy SEALs and astronauts. So how cool is that? <laughs> and, you know, so he's been doing this research since, um, 2007, um, with Navy SEALs and, and astronauts and finding, um, that, you know, the, the ketosis being in ketosis uh, physiologically is, is such a benefit to these elite, you know, kind of, you have to be kind of an elite athlete. Um, and you're doing a lot of mentally challenging tasks as well. So that, that laser focus, um, mental acuity that you have while you're in ketosis is very helpful. It, it improves your focus and reaction time. And you have a lot of physiological, um, benefits, um, anti-inflammatory and, and, and all that, that helps these, these athletes do what they need to do. So, um, Dr. Volick, um, headed up a study, um, gosh, I'm thinking it was maybe two years ago. I know I have the notes here. Um, so he did a study on, um, yeah, this was 2019 on uh, these, uh, army ROTC, uh, trainees. So they're, they're in college. This was at Ohio State University. It was a small group, um, tw only 29 people, but they did, um, you know, just like a comparison study. They just did one, just their traditional, you know, um, low fat, high carb, you know, workout more diet. And then they did one um, keto and they did um, more kind of high intensity interval training type of, of mm -hmm. fitness exercises. And the, the, um, the, the results were dramatically different and they did all sorts of stuff. They did like muscle glycogen testing and, and all sorts of really cool stuff, um, v, you know, VO two max. So it wasn't just about weight loss, right? Mm -hmm. They did all these, all these studies and found that this, the group that did keto and high intensity intervals got, I mean, was better in every single category basically. And, um, the, the improvements in visceral fat and, and body fat was just stunning. So the military kind of poked their head up and went, hmm, when they saw that. And they started to be open to, um, you know, not discouraging, uh, you know, a ketogenic approach. And I've done lots of talks. I've been hired by military units, you know, to come out and talk. And I always had to kind of tippy toe around oh, it. Wow. I never, I never, you know, had, you know, was able to say that keto or carnivore, mm -hmm. I, I approached it more like a kind of, uh, here are the benefits, you know, here's the research. And, um, you know, if we just eat like our ancestors did, you know, kind of more of an ancestral approach, you know, so I had to, to be wary because I knew I couldn't come in and directly, conflict with what the, the current DOD nutrition approaches are. Right. So the government. Yes, right. So they are, they, they are stepping back. They do have some new movements, um, especially focusing more on high intensity interval training rather than steady state cardio. Um, they, the army specifically changed, finally changed their fitness test from the old cold war fitness tests of just push ups, sit ups and a uh, two mile run to a much more, um, uh, military movement, military combat focused movements. These are all movements that you would need to do while out in the field. So I was so happy to see that we at fire team whiskey, we developed a train up for this because it is dramatically different. I'm mean, just going from a two mile run, sit ups and push ups to having to pull up your own body weight on a pull-up bar and bring your knees to your elbows. You know how many people who can do that just straight up with no training, like almost none. And I've done, I've done talks with big groups of the military when we were kind of transitioning to the new ACFT. And I said, be honest, you know, we can all close our eyes, raise your hand. If you can actually just do one pull-up. And I'm telling you maybe two people in a group of like a hundred soldiers raised their hand. Wow. Yeah. So this was because you, you've been, you know, and as a society, we've been taught this and I, I just hate it so much because it's, mm -hmm. it's, we train to the test, right? 
you know, you just see people who are just like, well, I'm just going to two weeks before the, the old fitness test, I'm just going to do a, a bunch of push ups. I'm going to run a lot and a bunch of sit ups and you train to the test. You're not actually training to the task. You know, what's the purpose of being physically fit in the military? Not to do a bunch of push ups and sit ups on a two mile run. That's exactly that's like that's a really old school mindset. It's like I need to be able to move my body and do some crazy stuff with my body in a precarious situation in a time of war, right? I can't just, you know, go out in the middle of a wartime um, situation. I'm getting shot at and go, well, well, darn it. I can't pull my own body weight up over this wall so I can get to safety. You know, can we do a timeout? Can everybody stop shooting at me? You know, I can't do this. It's like, no, that's not the way the world works. No, you can't, you know, you can't go, oh, time out. I need two weeks to train up for the specific task. Like we always have to be ready. And that's why I, I put Semper everything on, on everything Fire <laughs> Tomsky does. Always. Semper means always. It doesn't I didn't even notice that. That yeah. is, I love that so much. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I need to get one of those. Yeah, is, I'll send you one. I yeah. love so, it. Semper, like Semper, you always have to be ready in the military. And, and even though I'm not in the military anymore, I still want to be ready no matter what, because I mean, who knows in this crazy world, what could happen? You know, you could get in a car accident. You could, you know, get um, lost in the wilderness in the Olympic National Forest, like I did for three days. Oh no. Yeah, I did. Three days, I was lost in the forest. (laughs) No food and my, you know, my pack and, and my wits about me, you know, so how many people can go three days without eating? You throw an average American out there, Mm-mm. it wouldn't have lasted half a day. No, they wouldn't have lasted two hours. <laughs> <laughs> they were two hours. Pitiful. I went three days without food and was able to move myself to safety and get get help. So, you know, that that takes a lot of that that physical stress, that the physical, um, you know, the, the stuff that I had to do. I mean, I was bouldering, I was climbing, I was moving. I was no sleep for three days, no food. Almost no one physically can do that, but Mm -hmm. I was semper. I was ready. I was training for that. I didn't know that was going to happen to me and we don't know what's going to happen, but you're going to be damn grateful the moment you need it. And it saves your life or somebody else's life. And that's what I preach every single day. And especially when that happened to me and I actually was put in a life-threatening situation and my, my physical training, my physical readiness, and, and not only just fitness wise, but metabolic wise, I was mm-hmm. able to handle it. My metabolism was ready for that situation because if it were the old me, hypoglycemic me, I would have been done. I would have died out there. I wouldn't have been able to go two hours without food. I would have been passing out. I would have been done. That's so scary. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was a terribly frightening, but you know, everything that I had been doing since the age of 35, when I finally transitioned to keto was making me ready for that situation. I was Semper that day and it saved that, my life. That's awesome. It kind of sounds like really like the CrossFit approach is more appropriate to the military you know, with Mm -hmm. with the whole way you move and for daily things that you have to do. It's not just about how many, you know, of certain things you can do. It's about being able to do a bunch of different things and, and, you know, be very agile at it. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. The, the high intensity interval, kind of the CrossFit kind of style, um, strength training. Um, and that's what fire team whiskey is all based on. You know, it's not about, you know, steady state endurance. It's not about just going for a jog for two miles, you know, or two hours. Like I used to, because I thought I was burning more calories (laughs) actually, you know, you burn more body fat and burn more glucose quickly, um, and force your body into a fat burning state just by doing more, you know, high intensity, shorter intervals. Plus, hell, I love this time savings. I mean, <laughs> you know, I don't have to work out for two hours anymore. You know, I could just do yes. 30 minutes. <laughs> and it's crazy because I, I used to be an endurance racer back in the 20s. I, or when I was in my 20s, I was on the um, Florida Army National Guard endurance racing team. We did 300 mile races. 
you know, I was training up like 50, hundred miles a, a week, you know, wow. depending on how close we were to our race. So I was working out two to four hours a day and I was, let's see, 20 pounds heavier. I mean, just thinking about the extra weight that I was carrying around, you know, and I was working out that much. It had nothing to do with the amount I was working out. I was burning those calories, right? <laughs> That's what we're told. Yep. Right. If you're working out two to four hours a day going on, you know, hundred mile uh, bike rides, you're burning those calories. But why was I still fat? It's because what was going in here, mm -hmm. it was what was passing through my lips. It's what I was fueling up with, which was carbs and sugar and processed yeah. foods. Yeah. Which most of Americans are. And that's so sad to me now that your eyes are open, you know, <laughs> it's like before you, you so bought into the nutritional guidelines and thought that it was your fault. You're doing something wrong. You didn't. Mm -hmm eat less enough and you didn't move more enough, you know? Exactly. And so, oh, right. yeah. And, you know, and it's, it's, it's bled into, you know, this is, this is the sad part about it. If you think of, you know, the people who join the military, the very young, you know, people who leave the military, right? So there's this, this broken system right now. It's one, in, you know, we all know this one in three Americans, you know, the, the recruiting age, 17 to 24, are obese. We already know that they cannot serve in the military, even if they wanted to. So less people are actually able to join the military. So we have a recruiting issue. And then more people are leaving on the back end earlier in the military because of obesity, their failure to meet the body fat standards, their failure to meet the fitness standards and chronic medical health issues that are like 90% lifestyle based diabetes gets you kicked out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. high blood pressure if you can't get it under control within a certain amount of time kicked out high cholesterol same thing these are all lifestyle related chronic health issues so people are leaving the military earlier because of these issues and then guess what we've got the tab for the rest of their life medically we're wow. paying for this with our tax dollars. So on the back end, we're we're paying trillions of dollars for these chronic health issues that continue, you know, for the rest of their life. And I think it's it's a really it's a like a blight upon our nation. You know, we're making them sick by not teaching them how to avoid these chronic lifelong chronic health issues. And then we're paying the tab for it. And we, we say, thank you for your service. Like that's, yeah. it's, it's almost a mockery of, you know, of what people do when they join the military, they're making a certain commitment, but they're also kind of putting the nail in the coffin for themselves because they will go into the military healthcare system. And, you know, we will pay 1.1 billion, billion with a B dollars annually, just treating obesity related chronic health issues. That's wow. just obesity. Wow. I had no idea it was that bad. Yeah. 50% of, of veterans in the VA healthcare system have type two diabetes. Oh, that's terrible. It's, I mean, it, it's a shame. Like I want to hang my head and like, and hide myself because it really is shameful that these, these conditions, this suffering that's happening after they've served is a majority of what they're suffering from is related to just lifestyle related choices. The things that we taught them to do when Which they raise the right hand at 17 years old. Right. Yeah. And they will continue that. It, right. it just makes sense unless they, you know, get awoke. <laughs> right. Know, like, unless they like somehow, science. you know, get fed up and somehow stumble upon, you know, this new information, this, the, the latest research in nutrition and fitness and, and give it a try. Right. I mean, it, and they have to be open to trying it. And we have so many people who have gone through our programs. I mean, I don't know how many people have told me personally, you know, that fire team whiskey has saved their life. Wow. I mean, they're not, they're not just like, Oh, I lost 40 pounds. I'm so happy. It's, I believe you've saved my life. They have come to terms with 
I cannot believe the things that I was suffering from before I tried this. And then now where I'm at, you know, and I mean, I, I, I always tell this story. I have a, a guy who did our program. He started, he, I mean, he started with our pilot program from the very beginning when we first um, opened fire team whiskey and um, big dude, big, big guy, you know, definitely like a hundred pounds overweight and chronic, lots of chronic health issues. He stuck with our program for like over a year and lost a shit ton of weight. I think he lost 70 pounds, but I mean, and he was super happy about that. And he bragged all the time and he just loved it. But I remember he did like a live um, video on our fire team whiskey members page. And he, you just saw him, you just, he just turned on his phone and he backed up. He didn't say anything. He backed up and he started doing jumping jacks. And then he came towards the camera and you could see their tears just flowing down his face. He was crying. And he said, I never in a million years thought I would be able to jump again. I was told I would never be able to jump again or run again. And this is the power of what I have gone through. Not only just all the weight that he's lost, but the pain, the amount of pain and inflammation that he had in his joints and all the surgeries he had um, are, it's completely resolved. And he's no longer in pain chronically every single day of his life because of his military service. You know, that's the kind of stuff that we're talking about. I love that. That That is so awesome. And I, I think what you're doing is so incredibly important. And I, I, I want you to reach more people, you know, more out there, because I think that there's so much that is untapped. And it's just, it's really sad to see. Uh, luckily with my son, you know, he's got me being a big mouth, but uh, he also is a big hunter. So he tends to eat a lot of wild game and stuff like that. And he goes in spurts where he does like carnivore and then he'll kind of be more keto-ish. And then he like falls off the wagon and, you know, he likes his beer. So, you know, you have that, but he, he's pretty, he's pretty, you know, balanced. So, you know, I can't complain too much, but that's one thing I want to ask you about is like alcohol playing a part in all of this, because I know in the military, <laughs> at least in the Marines, alcohol is like a huge thing. It's like a coping thing. It's a, a entertainment. It's, it's pretty much what they feel like that's all they have, you know, on off mm -hmm. hours. Yeah. 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 And you know, I think it's a compounded issue. I mean, not only is it a cultural thing, you know, in the military is to have a bunch of drinks together at the end of the duty day. I mean, you have already a very high stress job, you know, you tend to, you can't smoke weed or do drugs. So, I mean, what else is there? Alcohol, it's legal. And you know, tobacco issue is also a big, big issue as well. And then the new, va the new vaping, you know, so mm -hmm. um, I, I think, and, and I remember, you know, people, especially with the tobacco, it's a stimulant, right? You know, and, and having those high energy drinks is a stimulant. And if you're constantly, um, sleep deprived and doing long shifts, then you're going to turn to those things, you know, because that's what everybody else is doing. And that's how they stay awake at night, you know, is you have a chew in your lip and you're drinking, you know, energy drinks. So, you know, that, that's, it's, it's part of the culture. And if you're doing anything else and you, you don't fit in, right. And we all ultimately want to fit in no matter how, you know, how macho we are and we, we, we want to, you oh, know, no, I do things different. I'm a black sheep. We all want to fit in. We don't want to look different from everybody else. So, and especially if you're coming into the military so young, that's compounded. You know, you want to look like your peer group. You don't want to stand out. You want to be the misfit, right? You don't want to be doing something different from everybody else. So I think that's, that's part of it is, is just the cultural and the fitting in. And this is just what we do. And if I do anything different, then I'm going to be weird. You know, I'm going to be the, the outcast. Well, you know, well, oh, you don't drink, you know, okay, well, what do you do? You know, we're not going to ask you to come out with us because you're not going to be any fun. You know, you're not going to do anything stupid. We want to see you do something stupid. It's very entertaining when you're, you're dumb and you're drunk, right? So true yeah, story, that's, <laughs> right? That's part of it. It's part of the culture. So, you know, but, and, and we don't, you know, I'm, I, I'm of the belief this, this comes from kind of the eating psychology background of, of, you know, for me and my training is 
I don't ever say you can't, you know, I don't ever say you can't drink alcohol. You can't do, because I know for me, if somebody tells me I can't, then I'm doing the exact opposite. <laughs> <Me right? too. laughs> yep. And that's how the military, like, we're just stubborn as shit. Like we just want to, you know, do the exact opposite. We get told, you know, especially if you're low, lower ranking, you get told what to do all day. You want to have some control over your life. So if somebody's telling you, you can't, then you want to do the exact opposite. So the approach that we take, you know, with our warrior wellness and our health education and our coaching is I don't, I don't give you a list of things that you can't have. You know, we, we just focus on what can you do? That, that's the first question I, I ask my clients when they sign up with me. I say, what are you willing to do? Are you willing to track your food? Are you willing to work out three days a week? Are, you know, I just want to focus on the positive. What, what behavior change are you willing to do and to try right now? I don't say you can't. And then we go from there and we take those baby steps because as soon as you kind of figure out that you can make some ch changes and you can start doing some things and you have a positive attitude about it, then we can move into starting to kind of take away some of those other things. Not, you know, permanently, there's always a focus on, you know, we're doing this for right now. And as once your body heals, you can maybe start reintroducing some of these things at a later date. But right now the damage has been done. You know, you don't take a, a broken car, you know, with a broken engine out to go for a race, right? You've got to get it fixed first and then you can do what you want to do later. But the focus is always on healing and, you know, always reminding them that this is, I always say, if it, I mean, if you're, you're coming to me and you're saying, I just want to lose 30 pounds, I say, go somewhere else. That's not what we do. I am not interested. I don't even care how much you weigh right now. I don't care. We don't track that. We're tracking the things that you're noticing on a daily basis. You know, are you having to, are you having less headaches? Are you, you know, constipated less? What, let's focus on those things. And then, you know, the weight will come, but that's not what, what we're interested in. I love that. I can't even tell you how much. That is my kind of more new philosophy, I guess you'd say, because now that I'm on the other side, and believe me, I started because I wanted to lose weight. I get that. I get that's important. And, and it is a good goal. I mean, yeah, you don't want to be obese. It's not comfortable. It's not fun. But when you focus so much on aesthetics instead of the healing that you can do to your body so that weight loss can be a benefit, it's a whole new world. And so now I try really hard with my clients to move them away from the focus of weight loss. Not that that's not, you know, a good thing to, to eventually have happen, of course, but I, I think it's so important that, you know, you focus on your health. And I always, and I say this all the time, but I was one of those people, I'd roll my eyes as somebody who would, you know, oh, health is so important, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. If you're 70, but you know, now I'm kind of like, now that I have good health, I get it. I really exactly. get it. Yeah. Yeah. So. And that, and that's also, it's a good approach to take because A, uh, I'm sure 99.9% .9 of us have completely unreal, uh, unrealistic expectations of what losing weight looks like for us, right? Because yes. we've, we've just been brainwashed. We can't erase that. That's not going away. You know, we've been told that a, a healthy fit body looks a certain way, right? And 99% of us are not gonna look like that. I am not Heidi Klum. I am not six foot two. Like that's, <laughs> I'm a short stocky, like I look like my dad, like I'm a split image of him. You know, I am never gonna look like Heidi Klum, you know, but that image is ingrained in me and it has been since, you know, I was a baby that, a. a a healthy fit, you know, beautiful woman looks a certain way. So if I focus on a, on the scale and, and, and that weight, I'm also thinking I want, I need my body to look like that. And if I don't get those results, I'm not doing this anymore. And so I'm focused on the wrong thing. And, and we also tend to not know what we don't know. We don't know if you're in the middle of just being sick and suffering and you have all these chronic health issues and you've had them for a very long time, it's your norm. 
Yes. <laughs> it's your norm. You don't know mm. any different. So you are not aware of how good health can be. You just exactly. have never experienced it. <laughs> so we can't even describe that to you up front and say, these, this is how you're going to feel. You won't know that until you're there. And so if we continue to just focus you down on those things, then you'll start to notice like, hey, gosh, I only had two headaches this week instead of nine. Wow, that, that's freaking awesome. Like, that's worth it. I mean, that alone. And then it just motivates you to keep going. Or like, if I can do, if I can get down to two, maybe I can get down to zero. So focusing on that, because the weight loss is going to fluctuate, right? It's always going to be, it's going to, it's going to go up. It's going to go down. It's going to start again. It's going to stop it. If we just focus on that, you're never going to make any progress because you're going to throw in the towel as soon as it starts to slow down Mm -hmm. or, or stop. Yep. And, or you reach maintenance and then what? Your body's not healed. It's not in a place where it can maintain that. Plus how you did to get there is probably the old way of doing it. And you can't sustain that anyway. It's not sustainable. And you have to sustain that if you want to maintain that weight loss. So it's this vicious circle. Right. And, you know, I also say, you know, the the weight loss industry is a billion dollar industry, (laughs) right? I'm not going to make billions of dollars doing what I do. You know why? Because I'm not focused on weight loss. <laughs> we actually set you up to not need us anymore. <laughs> That's a crazy concept in the weight loss world. <laughs> it's true. Right? Yeah. It's like, if you, um, I, I won't say the brand name, but it, it rhymes with fate fotchers. Um, <laughs> if you know anybody who's done fate fotchers <laughs> before, how many times have you done it? Uh, four times losing 80 to hundred pounds. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. But many other times doing 20, 30, 50, 60, whatever. Yeah. So I don't know anybody like you who's done fate fotchers once. <laughs> That's why <laughs> they're a billion dollar company oh. guys. They're setting you up to fail. They know you're going to fail. They know you're going to yep. come back. Right. There are, so what we do is the exact opposite of that. We're actually setting you up with the tools that you can take and be successful without us. You don't ever need to come back. Now we'd love to have you, but you don't. <laughs> we're setting you up to never need us ever again, which is why I'll never make any money doing this. <laughs> so, I'm but just your mission that. is, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. well, well, your mission is to help, and you know that that's my mission. Do you think I make any money? What I do? No, I don't. <laughs> you know, and so the little teeny bit I get for coaching, that's about it. Uh, this is all just because I don't want anybody else to have to suffer like I did, and I didn't know what I didn't know. Like what you said earlier, if you don't have the information, how are you supposed to know that there's something different? So I'm trying to be as loud as I can to maybe help one person, two people, three people. I don't know as many as I can to at least have the information to go do their own research. Right. Because I had never even heard of keto. I have, you know, never heard of carnivore, never heard that you can actually live without carbs. (gasps) Oh my goodness. You know, I would have just thought you were crazy, Mm -hmm. you know, so all this information. And we're, and we're coming up on, you know, we're in the the end of the year, you know, so everybody's just kind of given up at this point, Mm -hmm. especially with COVID and everything else going on. So this year's shot, right. And we, we know, you know, the statistics are in a, almost everybody makes a new year's resolution and only 92% actually have any success with it. Mm -hmm. So what, what's the difference? Like, why do so many people fail when they try and change their behaviors? Why is that? You know, we, we all have, you know, these, these goals and almost everybody fails. It's because nobody is working on the behavior change, the psychology aspect mm-hmm. of what we're talking about. I don't care what you're trying to do. I don't care if you're trying to run a hundred mile marathon or lose five pounds. It's the same approach. It's behavior change. It's having to set up your environment to support your goals. And it's having those baby steps to slowly step you to your ultimate goal. And nobody does this. They just say, my goal is just to eat healthier this year. 
I want to lose 40 pounds. Well, that's a very general statement. How is that going to happen? Nobody actually breaks that down. Almost no one does. Because if you did, you would be successful. But you just have this general overarching goal. And I'm a big hiker. So, you know, I describe it as if I go, I have a, you know, a hike planned this weekend. It's this big mountain, right? If I'm standing at the base of this mountain, which I've done many times and looked up and go, all right, I have to go from here to here. That's my goal. Well, how the hell is that going to happen? Because that seems insurmountable, right? It's like, how the hell am I going to get up there? Whoa, I don't know if I really want to do that. <laughs> so I might just go back to the car and go have some breakfast, right? So if I'm just looking at the overarching goal, I'm setting myself up for failure. What I really need to be doing is looking right straight in front of me and go, all right, I need to take this step. And then I need to take the next and focus down on that and never look up because I'm not going to magically jump from here to there. There's going to be a lot of suffering on the way there. A lot of steps I have to take. But if I focus just up there, I don't feel like I'm never going to get there because I'm just going to be like, oh, it seems like it's getting further and further away. Right. But I've got to just focus on that little mini step, all the little mini steps that I've got to take to get to that goal. That's the psychology. And, and that is so incredibly important. And I know with my clients, that is probably 90% of what I do is, is trying to help with that, the mental, the emotional, the relationship with food, the, you know, past issues, those kind of things that affect what you're trying to do. And I think so many people don't pay enough attention to that. And what was the statistic you, you said earlier about how much of it really is the mental, the emotional, that kind of thing versus? Oh yeah, I say 92% because a hundred percent of people, if a hundred percent of people make goals for the new year and only 92% achieve them, then 92, it's 92% mental. Because we all have goals, right? And we mm -hmm. all know we have to change our behavior, but a majority of people don't know how to do that. They don't have the tools to be able to do that. And it is, a, I, I describe it as a toolbox. Like if I'm going to go work on something, right? And I have an empty toolbox, how the hell am I gonna fix anything? If I just have my old tools, the old way of doing things in there, I'm gonna go back to my old tools and try and fix the situation with my old tools. So this is the problem with, you know, the military and how they're approaching the, the, the weight loss issue, the obesity issue that they have. They're still trying to use the old tools that haven't worked, obviously by 73% of the obesity rate increasing in just a few years, the old tools aren't working. So we need to add some new tools and try those, but you have to be open to that. And sometimes you don't have any idea what tools you need. So you need to hire a professional, a, a health coach, get some education, start listening to some podcasts like this to get those tools in your toolbox to start reaching for instead of the old ones, because if the old ones are the only ones you have a choice from, you're gonna go back to those every time. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I could not agree with you more. I said, Oh, wow. Okay. Time. Is there anything else you wanted to discuss that we haven't covered that you feel is important or any last minute advice or anything like that? Oh, wait, you know what? Let, before you do that, let's go ahead and talk about the fire whiskey. I'm sorry, the fire team whiskey program. What exactly is that? So people can understand what do you do? Yeah, so um, we are on an all online program. We have uh, fitness trainers, certified fitness trainers who are all military veterans, first responders or law enforcement. So um, that's kind of who we, we cater to the most. And um, with, we have kind of packaged programming. We have uh, our, all our fitness trainers provide fitness videos. We have an app. Um, so everything's kind of based on the app. We, we do online uh, fitness and health coaching. 
So, you know, if you were to hire me as your health and fitness coach, we would work together for 90 days at a time. Um, I put you right on a fitness program, you know, based on your goals and where you're at. So it's all customized. You know, it's not just like a cookie cutter, like do these workouts, eat this way. We, you know, we consult with you. We have video um, coaching meetings every week. We have group coaching meetings every week with the whole group. Um, and we also incorporate, which is the, the biggest part of this is what we call our warrior wellness program. So we include health education videos on your programming. So I open up my app, I've got my workout of the day, I've got my health education video for the day. And you learn about something, something maybe you already know about and something maybe you've never even heard of like intermittent fasting or, you know, just how to read a nutritional label. You know, even wow. basic things like that. Um, and we also, we have it, you know, expanded to a holistic health. I mean, you learn how to meditate. We have like three minute meditation we take you through. Um, you learn about you know, the importance of sleep and um, how to, you know, have a good sleep management routine. So um, spiritual health, I did an interview with my favorite army chaplain and we talked about how important, I don't care what religion you, you claim or not claim, your spiritual health is, is a, a big part of your overall health as well. So, um, and what I, I love what he says, if you're not at ease spiritually, then you're at dis-ease, right? Yeah, that's yeah. powerful. Yeah. Wow. So no matter what you do, if you eat a certain way and do these certain workouts, I don't care if you're, you're consistent and you do those every single day and you check all those boxes. If you're at dis-ease in your spirit and in your mindset and your mentality, all of that is going to fade away. It's going to break down. Those are, those things are not going to be able to be maintained because it's, you're going to be eaten in, you know, from the inside out, it's going to bleed into your, your outer um, aspect. So you have to work on that. And especially with our, you know, military members and, and first responders, you know, we've, a, a majority of us have experienced some sort of trauma, right? You know, and, and maybe are continuing to experience trauma, especially with our first responders, our firefighters and our police, you know, and you never know when it's going to be a day where you're exposed to a trauma, right? So you're constantly having to heal from that. You're constantly having to, you know, address that because that does affect your metabolism. That does affect your health. If you have high cortisol levels and you're always in fight or flight, or you experience, you know, a, some threat to your life, or you see somebody who, you know, has, has died and that tra traumatizes you, then that's going to affect your biology, right? It, it's going to, you can't deny that. You can't just say, well, I'm, I'm not affected anymore. I've seen it, you know, been there, done that. No, it's, it's, it's in there, it's festering. And if you're not dealing with it, then it's going to grow and affect your health in some way, right? So, um, and we all know, you know, the atrocious suicide rates that we mm. have, and those continue to, to increase, not only for military members, but for our first responder population, the police, I mean, that's, they're in a, a skyrocketing um, um, epidemic of, of uh, you know, suicide uh, attempts and, and completed suicides in their ranks. So we have to address that. That's, that's not something that we could ignore and just say, well, you need to lose X amount of pounds and you need to be able to do this many push-ups. You, you need to be addressing the inside. So that we, a big focus of what we do at fire team whiskey is a dealing with those, those internal things. That's so important. Thank you for doing what you do. That's so huge. Uh, so huge. Okay. So let me ask you just one question before you get to say your last bit, whatever you want to say. Um, can anybody join or does it have to be military and first responders? Like if say, if I wanted to, could I join? Yeah, anybody can join. Um, okay. We, you know, we, a majority of the people who do join us are, are military veterans or f first responders or spouses of, or family members of, I mean, I think at, out of that, you know, almost all of us have, have some sort of connection with military members or veterans or first responders, you know, like you said, with your son. So um, it's, you know, that that's what you, you should expect, you know, that's just, 
coming in, I had a 72 year old woman join us and hire me. Wow. I, I had to ask her when she called, I was like, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure you called the right number? Like, I'm, I'm like, do you know what you're getting into? <laughs> you know, it's like, it was so mind boggling to me that a 72 year old woman would be attracted to our program. And you know what she said, she said, she heard me on a, a radio show or a TV show or something I was on. And she just said, I just felt like you were speaking to me. And I just felt like you were the one who could help me. And she's like, it didn't matter what it was. I, I wanted to do it. You know, just something about us resonated with her. So yes, we can help anybody just know you're going to be, you know, doing military style workouts. And that's just kind of our approach. Um, but it's not, you know, it's, we're not yelling at you like at a boot camp, like eat this, don't eat that, you know, <laughs> do five push ups. You know, it's, it's not that kind of approach. It really is a more holistic approach. That's why we call it warrior wellness. Um, we are going to be addressing everything. It's not just, you know, eat this and, or don't eat that and do these workouts. We're, we're working on the whole person. So if you are ready to work on the whole person, then yes, you could join fire team whiskey. If you're oh, not ready for that, then you can go somewhere else, fail, and then come to us. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Well, there you go. Okay. So any last minute things you want to say or any advice or anything like that? Um, just lastly, if, if you are, you know, listening to this or, or watching this and, um, you know, maybe you've dabbled in it, maybe you've done keto, but it didn't work for you or, you know, or maybe you've fallen off the wagon because, you know, 2020. So <laughs> I just encourage you, you know, it's, it's not too late every day as a, a brand new day. I was, I would say to my clients, you know, treat it like Vegas, whatever happened yesterday happened yesterday. You know, we're just, we're moving on. You know, so don't get so wrapped up in, you know, your, your failures, you know, the, the most important thing I do a lot of talks about failing forward. That's the most important thing is if you're failing forward, that means you're learning from your mistakes. This is not a mistake free journey for sure. You're going to fail. You're going to have setbacks and that's okay. But as long as you're making steady state progress forward, then you are going to reach your goal eventually. It might take a little longer, but today, now, this moment, the second, right now is when you start. Don't wait till January. Oh, I'll start January 1st. That's bullshit. That's, that's an excuse. You can start the second this day right now. There's no excuse for that. I don't care what's happening in your life. I don't care if you're sitting in front of a plate of donuts right now or eating a pint of ice cream while you're listening to this podcast. You can drop the spoon. You can say no. You have control over your destiny. You're the only one who actually has control over your destiny. Us as health coaches, me and Amber, you know, we can't do this for you. We can't, you know, treat you like a puppet and, and puppet you around your life. We're trying to equip you with the tools to make you successful and make you have steady state progress for the rest of your life. And that's what we want. That's the ultimate goal is we want you to have a healthy life, a, a wonderful, non-suffering life. Yes. So where you mm -hmm. don't have to be going to medical appointments and taking medications on a daily basis and you have the freedom of, to do what you wanna do for the rest of your life. And it's nothing is sadder to me I, my army daddy just, just retired and, you know, he wants to do what I'm doing is traveling around full time in an RV. That's like been his and his wife's lifelong dream. Well, she has a ton of chronic health issues. Oh. She is a type two diabetic and has all the things that go with it. They cannot do what their, their life dream. They, now that he's retired and they're ready to go, that dream is blown up because of a chronic health condition based on a new, poor nutritional lifestyle choices. It's devastating. And I would not wish that on my worst enemy. I would not. So you can start this minute, this moment right now and start making that those baby steps towards getting to the top of that mountain. Perfectly said. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much, Stephanie. And hey, y'all, be sure to subscribe to the channel and then go follow Fire Team Whiskey. Stephanie, you're awesome. I, I love what you do. I appreciate what you do. And thank you so very much for coming on the podcast. Thank you, Amber. I had a lot of fun.